When USAID established its mission in 1999, Kosovo was a country in dire need of assistance. Extended conflict had left the country without electricity or water. There was no justice system or rule of law. There were no banks, and the economy had been shattered. USAID and other international donors set to the task of helping its people rebuild their country. In the first three years after the conflict, USAID committed over 100 million euros for reconstruction. In partnership with the UN mission in Kosovo and the provisional institutions of self-government, USAID focused on rebuilding physical infrastructure and human capacity. Vulnerable groups, including families, women, and children, received special attention. The effectiveness of the recovery effort was impressive. Refugees flooded back into their country. And with international assistance, citizens began to reconstruct their lives and society. Craig Buck was USAID's first mission director in Kosovo. Rebuilding the devastated city of Jakova was a big priority during his tenure. But very quickly, I saw the spirit of the Kosovar people. They began to come back, mm -hmm. they began to rebuild, they began to take care of the problems that they saw. And so it was going from total destruction to a thought of we can make progress. In just five years, over half of Kosovo's population was benefiting from rebuilt health clinics, reopened schools, new markets and roads, and stronger electricity infrastructure. Nearly half of the communities assisted included minority populations, and all projects employed local labor. In order to establish a foundation for sustainable employment and get the country's economy on track, USAID joined the UN Interim Administration Mission and other donors to help create new economic institutions, regulatory frameworks, and financial systems. Kosova is a land that is built with the purpose of USAID. USAID has made a contribution to the most important part of the creation of the institutions. It has made a contribution to the most important part of the creation of the government and the Ministry of Finance, the Bank of the Central Bank, the Trust of the Kursime. With USAID's help, a tax administration was established that has collected over 1 billion euros in taxes to date. The creation of a central bank supported the emergence of a sound and rapidly growing banking sector. USAID also focused on bringing order and clarity to property rights to help empower individual citizens and local businesses with reliable access to credit. These challenges disproportionately impact certain populations, including women and minorities, who are key to Kosovo's long-term prosperity. One of the big barriers for women is a lack of property ownership uh, in the country where many women have given up their rights to property ownership and so they aren't able to get credit to help them start a business if they choose to do so. Competition within the banking sector was essential to driving down interest rates for borrowers, men and women alike. For the first time in its history, USAID established a bank, the American Bank of Kosovo, to inject competition into the market. This innovative project was an unqualified success. A year and a half later, USAID sold the successful enterprise to Raiffeisen Bank of Austria, and the proceeds were used to establish the Kosovo American Education Fund. Today, Kosovo hosts nine licensed banks, seven foreign and two local. They help form the backbone of a growing private sector. Easing Kosovo's transition from a socialist society to a market-based economy remains a core priority. Since the end of the conflict, USAID has helped privatize 90% of former socially owned enterprises. USAID has supported nearly 10,000 businesses with technical assistance and access to over 63 million euros in loans, creating over 20,000 new jobs. Businesses have benefited from a combined increase of nearly 340 million euros in sales, 33 million euros in exports, and over 100 million euros in private investments. Reinvigorating Kosovo's undertapped agriculture sector has been a core part of the strategy. Through the New Opportunities for Agriculture Program, or NOAA, USAID is helping link farmers to markets, providing them access to credit, and ensuring the quality and safety of their food. So, I'm going to say that I'm going to say that I'm going to say that NOAA awarded Valbona Ademi a grant to start a gherkin farm, 
With the money, she started a business that now employs 10 family members and members of her community as well. Noah makes a special effort to support female farmers like Valbona and Noria Gashi, who has grown her crop to include peppers as well. While agriculture is a core pillar of Kosovo's economy, USAID has also worked to encourage entrepreneurship across all industries. The Young Entrepreneurs Program, YEP, supported Kosovo's emerging entrepreneurs between the ages of 18 and 35. Ideja ka qenë me fillu prodhimin e veshjeve në seri, të cilën veç jemi të e punu, falë të sot jepit. Flutura Dedinja is one of Jep's success stories. An architect by training, she decided to branch into fashion design with a little help from USAID. Kom për zgjedhë me u marë me design, të marë para su që më përqen me kryu sene, që ndoshta produktin është mas larti 15 minuta ose mas një ore. Mirë po unë e komponi, si me thonë, një inkorporim të vlerave të artit edhe të tregu që ka përkohet. Kom vendos me gjithë një farmese edhe me shëndru, si me thonë, artit në biznes. Gjithë që nuk o konë asë pak e le. With Kosovo taking its first steps as a sovereign democracy, USAID has been a constant source of support. Special attention is placed on programs that protect citizens' democratic rights, including guaranteeing advocacy and access to government institutions. Since 1999, Kosovo has held nine elections, four nationally and five on the local level. USAID and its implementing partners have been active in election monitoring and supported aggressive initiatives to get out the vote for each round of voting. Kosovo held its fifth round of local municipal elections at the end of 2013 the first to include the northern Serb-majority municipalities. International elections observers deem them largely free and fair. If this election showed anything, it was that not only is Kosovo capable of conducting a free and fair elections, but that voters will hold their elected leaders accountable for the promises that they make during the campaign. The 2013 elections brought a change in over 80% of mayorships. What I hope it means for the future is that the elected mayors, the new mayors, or whether they're new or re-elected, will really listen to their constituents, really listen to their citizens, work collaboratively with the municipal assemblies, which are sometimes dominated by a different party. That's what municipal elections are all about. To ensure Kosovo's elected leaders are prepared and equipped to serve, USAID invests in leadership training for political figures and other key government leaders. And you will probably only get one or two questions, but you will have to answer them and think on your feet. First launched in 2012, Kosovo's Week of Women is now an annual event uniting the country's women leaders and offering training for those interested in running for office. With Kosovo making the transition from supervised independence in 2012, Atifeta Yahyaga, the country's first woman president and the world's youngest head of state, looked to USAID for assistance in organizing an international women's summit. The summit brought 200 leaders from around the world to Kosovo to discuss women's economic empowerment, political participation, and security. It is our obligation as leaders, survivors, experts, and advocates to raise our voices and become the voice of all the women in our societies and around the world whose rights are denied. The leaders of this young democracy have faced no lack of challenges, but primary among them has been establishing a strong, accountable rule of law. USAID is helping Kosovo's legislature and judiciary to be more responsive to its citizenry by helping develop good governance legislation, improved rules of parliamentary procedure, and establishing a freedom of information law. With USAID support, in just 15 years, Kosovo has adopted a new constitution, established a constitutional court and notary system, vetted and appointed 448 judges and prosecutors, and established organizations like the Kosovo Judicial Council and the Kosovo Prosecutorial Council to support the justice sector. In January 2013, 
a new national court structure was rolled out to improve the transparency and effectiveness of the courts. The restructuring was coupled with a massive renovation project. 29 court buildings were identified for renovation to help reflect the renewed commitment to a fair and transparent justice system. The courts have such an important role to play in terms of growing the economy, in terms of developing the democracy, in terms of giving people confidence in their governing institutions. USAID also partnered with the Balkan Investigative Reporting Network, which produced a series of reports to inform the public about the new judicial restructuring and their legal rights. The absence of written business contracts poses a major challenge to Kosovo's civil law. The Systems for Enforcing Agreements and Decisions program, SEED, encouraged businesses to use written contracts and embrace mediation for dispute resolution in many cases where a written contract did not exist. As physique, as me in 2011, USAID partnered with the Kosovo Chamber of Commerce and the American Chamber of Commerce to develop alternative dispute resolution centers. Together, they trained a panel of professional arbitrators to help ease the burden off the court system. At the beginning of 2014, the country's first batch of private enforcement agents were sworn in, further reducing the enforcement backlog in the courts. Kosovo has taken tremendous strides since the end of the conflict in 1999, but the scars of its violent past endure. To ensure this young, vibrant country remains a home for all its diverse communities, USAID has supported efforts to empower and integrate minority communities so that the voices of all citizens can be heard, and that secure jobs and access to education are a birthright for those willing to work for them. USAID has made a major investment in supporting minority media. This investment has included the creation of a minority media network, including four TV stations, three production companies, and eight radio stations. The daily news from the Kosovo Media Association, broadcast six nights a week, is a popular local radio program in the Serbian language. It began in 2012 thanks to a USAID grant. Jer je u tom periodu su obrađivane veoma osetljive teme koje se tiču pregovora između Beograda i Prištine, tako da je da su naši slušalci imali prilike da iz prve ruke na najbolji mogući način nepristrasnu informaciju koja sadrži stavove obe strane čuju i u najpopularnijem terminu koji prate svaku nema. Integrating the Serb-majority municipalities in the north is an essential part of Kosovo's long-term security and prosperity. USAID expanded its assistance to the four municipalities in the north in 2011 through the Community Action Initiative program. The program is working to help businesses grow, create new jobs, and improve the lives of citizens in northern Kosovo. <laughs> Zvonimir Vasic received a grant from the Community Action Initiative program to expand his honey business. With it, he doubled the number of hives and hired two new employees. USAID has also completed 88 community infrastructure projects and helped establish community development forums in many Serb-majority municipalities. Together, these community-driven collaborations help identify future projects. To ensure that Kosovo citizens participate more fully in the governance of their daily lives, schools, and public services, 
USAID has supported the country in creating a more balanced power share between the central and municipal governments. USAID fundamentally believes that good governance and democracy starts at the local level, where citizens need to be engaged with the, the government at the local level, and they need to have confidence in the government to provide the basic services that they need. Part of the decentralization process included the creation of four new Serb-majority municipalities, Gracanica, Ranilug, Klokot, and Partesh. Another, Novo Burdo, expanded to include new Serb-majority villages. As the former Speaker of the House for the United States, Tip O'Neill, said, all politics is local. And what he meant by that was that people need to be able to see and feel the effects of governance in their daily lives. In the Serb-majority municipality of Štrpsa, that includes protecting the region's natural beauty. USAID supported the municipality in establishing a tourist center in Štrpsa through its Democratic Effective Municipalities Initiative. The project established satellite offices in Štrpsa and new municipalities like Partesh, where representatives work side by side with local government to establish administrative systems like issuing identification documents. This initiative has assisted municipalities with everything from establishing property taxes to creating a system for garbage collection. Nearly 5 million euros in incentive funds have gone to local governments for a range of projects like school infrastructure, citizen service centers and registration offices, sidewalks, and parks. Kosovo is not only the newest country in Europe, but also among the youngest. Educating Kosovo's youth is integral to sustaining the country's economic recovery and increasing its global competitiveness. USAID is partnering with the government to strengthen Kosovo's education system and help empower talented youth with the skills to be Kosovo's future leaders. The mission is focused on equipping Kosovo's teachers with the training and resources they need, and classroom facilities that meet international standards. In cooperation with the municipality of Pristina, USAID built a new green school in the country's capital, using renewable materials and geothermic heating, setting a new standard for school design in the region. USAID has established 25 professional development centers across the country to enable local, cost-effective professional development for teachers. Since 2010, the basic education program has worked with Kosovo's primary schools to attain a high level of educational excellence, preparing youth with the necessary skills to succeed in the global economy. Kyrst Basic Education Program. Through the 21st Century Classrooms Initiative, renovation projects were completed in more than 100 schools in 24 municipalities through community involvement. Arta Shahini is a kindergarten teacher at Velezeret Frasheri School in Lipian. Shahini's is one of dozens of schools across Kosovo that have incorporated new reading standards into their curriculum. The standards were formed based on the results of an early grade reading assessment USAID conducted through surveying 800 young readers in Kosovo. USAID's approach to education recognizes that it takes a village to raise a child. In addition to its primary and secondary school programs, the mission is also working with Kosovo's universities to improve their capacity and provide more opportunities for higher education for students who show promise. 
A school of public service was established at the American University of Kosovo, and Kosovo's first commercial law master's degree program was established at the University of Pristina with USAID support. With the help of USAID, Kosovo has transformed from a war-torn society into a vibrant, young country with tremendous potential and promise. I've traveled all around Kosovo with USAID. We've seen roads and schools built. We've seen increased agriculture and factory production as a result of our projects. And I can say it's an incredible feeling of accomplishment. We want many members of local staff have been here since opening of the mission in 1999 because we see the difference we are making at people's lives. And there is still much work to be done in moving the country forward. In 2013, USAID announced its five-year strategy in Kosovo. The mission's focus will remain fixed on strengthening the country's economic and government institutions and increasing investment and private sector employment. A big part of that will be creating new opportunities for emerging leaders and making sure those opportunities are readily available to young men and women. It's very exciting to be able to plant that seed in, in young girls that they can influence the future of their country. And they believe that. And we want to make sure that we can help them fulfill that dream. In early 2014, USAID launched the Transformational Leadership Program. Over the next five years, the program will provide scholarships for hundreds of Kosovo's most promising students to pursue master's degrees in the United States. The most important thing is that people have a passion for helping their country. And one of the actual requirements of the program is after they finish studies is to return to Kosovo and volunteer or uh, work for the government, whether it be central government or municipal government. Also at the beginning of 2014, USAID inaugurated its first government-to-government -government project, a kindergarten in Baia village, built in partnership with the municipality of Istok. Partnering directly with the government on more projects like this one will continue to make institutions stronger and more responsive to the country's citizens. Kosovo is a vibrant country, comprised of people from many different backgrounds. USAID will continue to make inclusiveness a priority across its programs to ensure that Kosovo society is one that embraces diversity and where every voice is heard. Kosovo has a steadfast partner in USAID, and through this partnership, the future for one of the world's youngest democracies is incredibly bright.